solutions to differential equations are classified between general and particular. Although they possess the same procedure, one has to work on more details than the other. Learn about them here in Engineering Math 5. Similar when you look for the values in algebraic equations, solutions to differential equations is somehow eliminating the derivatives in the function. The process of finding the solution is called solving or integrating, and the solution itself is also called primitive. There are two types of DE solutions. One is known as general solution and the other particular solution. Moving on with general solution. This is the type of simplification of the differential equation where derivatives are extracted but arbitrary constants appear. General solution of DE can also be termed as complete solution, complete integral, or complete primitive. Let's check on some examples to show general solution. Say we have the equation derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 3x squared. This is a first order derivative which would mean that we only need to integrate the function once to take the derivative out. So by integrating both sides of the equation, we arrive at y for the integrated dy all over dx. On the right side, 3 would just be extracted out and the integral of x squared is x cubed all over 3 which then cancels out the constant 3. Thus, the general solution for the DE is y is equal to x cubed plus c. Again, c is the arbitrary constant which appears in the general solution of DE. If we have the equation, the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to x squared all over 5 less 3. In order for us to get the solution, the function would require to be integrated twice. So let's proceed with the first integration. The integral of the second derivative of y with respect to x will be taken as dy all over dx. On the right side, the denominator 5 can be extracted out as 1 fifth and the integral of x squared is x cubed all over 3. The constant 3 is then taken as 3x. And don't forget to add the first arbitrary constant. Since there is still a derivative left, we got to have another integration. So integrating dy all over dx will then give y. x cubed all over 15 when integrated will give 1 15th of x to the fourth power divided by 4. 3x is then 3x squared all over 2. c1 will be c1x and there appears another arbitrary constant C2. So by simplifying, the general solution appears to be y is equal to x to the fourth power all over 60 plus 3x squared all over 2 plus C1x plus C2. So what do we do to get the particular solution of a DE? Particular solution attempts to give values to the arbitrary constants to avoid having Cs in the solution. In all cases, a given value of y is provided with a certain place of x. So from the previous general solution we got, in case c1 is computed as 1 and c2 is taken as 2, simply plug these values to make the particular solution, which is y is equal to x to the fourth power, all over 60, plus 3x squared, all over 2, plus x, plus 2. So let's show the procedure of taking both general and particular solutions for a given DE given the differential equation where y at 1 is equal to 3 and y prime at 1 is also equal to 1. 
we have already sorted out the general solution of the DE, where we have the first derivative function of x cubed all over 15 plus 3x plus c1, and the general solution as x to the fourth power all over 60 plus 3x squared all over 2 plus c1x plus c2. Let's continue by figuring out the value of c1, so from the given, which states y prime at 1 is equal to 1, which actually means y prime is equal to 1 when x is equal to 1, we plug these values into the first derivative function, so we would get 1 is equal to 1 cubed all over 15 plus 3 times 1 plus c1. And by simplifying terms, we get c1 as negative 31 all over 15. Next is to plug the given y that y is equal to 3 when x is 1. So from the general solution, we can plug the values, which would turn out as 3 is equal to 1 to the fourth power all over 60 plus 3 times 1 squared all over 2 minus 31 all over 15 times 1 plus c2 where we can simplify the value of C2 taken as 71 all over 20. Now that we have identified the arbitrary constants, we can then say that the particular solution for the DE is Y equal to X to the fourth power all over 60 plus 3X squared all over 2 minus 31 all over 15X plus 71 all over 20. Another process which can be done with the solutions of differential equations is by proving. So if we are to determine whether the function f of y, which is equal to c1 times e raised to x plus c2 times e raised to negative 3x plus sine x is a general solution of the differential equation given as the second derivative of y with respect to x plus 2 times the derivative of y with respect to x minus 3y is equal to 2 cosine x minus 4 sine x. We would have to process the answer, which is f of y given as c1 times e raised to x plus c2 times e raised to negative 3x plus sine x. Note that from that de, with the second degree derivative, we got to differentiate the solution twice. So from the given solution, the first derivative is then taken as f prime of y, which is equal to c1 times e raised to x minus 3 times c2 times e raised to negative 3x plus cosine x. And the second derivative is computed as f double prime of y, which is c1 times e raised to x plus 9 times c2 times e raised to negative 3x minus sine x. In this case, it is presumed that you remember your basic operations of differential and integral calculus. Now that we have the needed functions, substitute them to the original equation. And the second derivative of y with respect to x, and then 2 of the derivative of y with respect to x minus 3 of y, and this is equal to 2 cosine x minus 4 sine x, giving us a long equation. Distributing the coefficient, we arrive at a long but simpler function where we can indeed cancel out terms. For c1, we have c1 times e raised to x plus 2 times c1 times e raised to x minus 3 times c1 times e raised to x, which cancels out. And in the case of c2, we start with 9 times c2 times e raised to negative 3x minus 6 times c2 times e raised to negative 3x minus 3 times c2 times negative e or times e raised to negative 3x would also cancel out. So we are left with 2 cosine of x less 4 times sine of x, which is exactly what we have on the right side of the equation. So having them equal, we can say that the function of y, which is given as c1 times e raised to x plus c2 times e raised to negative 3x plus sine x, is indeed a solution for the differential equation, the second derivative of y with respect to x, 
plus 2 times the derivative of y with respect to x minus 3y is equal to 2 cosine x minus 4 sine x.